Hello and welcome to episode 3 of the Production Byte series. I'm your host, Vera Nova, and today I'm going to talk about how sound works. This is to give you a background understanding for the next tutorial, which will be on synthesis, and help you better understand why other production techniques from the past tutorials work. A good analogy for sound is a pond. When there's no sound, the pond is completely still. But if you drop a pebble in the pond, ripples are created which appear to move away from the centre. The splash's energy pushes water away from the source, compressing the water in front of it, causing a wave. This in turn pushes into and compresses the water in front of that, and so on. This also creates an area of low pressure, or a rarefaction, behind the wave which pulls the displaced water back into place after the wave has passed by. Sound spreads out in exactly the same manner, although in three dimensions and moving a lot faster. The sound energy is being passed as vibrations through the air instead of the water. All of this is shown by this image. If you keep your eye on one point in this image, you'll see it's moving backwards and forwards, but not actually moving with the wave. This is the compression and rarefaction phase, passing the energy through the air. We can show sound using a waveform. This is like a graphical representation of the energy's compression and rarefaction phases from a single point in the pond. The top half is the compression phase, pushing away from the source, and the bottom half is the rarefaction phase, where the water is pulled back into place. A waveform which is just a flat line would be completely silent, because vibrations are created by the compression and rarefaction phases fluctuating. So no fluctuation means no sound. The length of the wave cycle, which is one compression and one rarefaction, determines its pitch. This is because a shorter wave can complete more cycles per second, which makes a higher frequency, and a longer wave can complete less cycles per second, which makes a lower frequency. Hertz is the unit of measurement for pitch. For instance, a pure tone, also known as a sine wave, is a single frequency. Pitched at 1000 Hz, it will complete 1000 cycles a second. All musical sounds have a root pitch, which is how we hear notes. The note A below middle C on a keyboard, or piano, is pitched at 440 Hz. Double any frequency, and the new frequency will be an octave higher. Therefore 880 Hz is also the note A, but an octave up from before. However, musical instruments create sounds far more complex than a pure tone. All musical sounds still have the pure tone in them, however this is the lowest pitched tone in the sound and is called the fundamental frequency. It is still the frequency our ears use to determine the note being played, however. All other tones in the sound are multiples of this fundamental pitch and are called harmonics, partials or overtones. A harmonic is an integer multiple of the fundamental frequency, so this can be the fundamental frequency times 2, times 3, times 4, times 5, and so on. An overtone doesn't have to be a multiple at all, it can be any set of frequencies or frequency on top of a fundamental. A partial is one frequency inside a complex waveform, so that can include any overtones or the fundamental frequency. A saw wave, for instance, contains every single integer harmonic. So the fundamental frequency times 2, times 3, times 4, times 5, and so on. This animation shows a saw wave being built up from partials, starting with just the fundamental. You can see the waveform slowly turning into a saw wave as more partials are added. A square wave, on the other hand, contains only odd integer harmonics, so the fundamental frequency times 3, times 5, times 7, times 9, and so on. The top half of this chart shows a square wave being built up from its individual partials. You can see it turning more and more into a square wave as more harmonics are added. In all waveforms, the harmonics become quieter the higher up in pitch they become. You can see this on the bottom half of this chart, where the two edge spikes represent the lowest frequencies or the fundamental, and moving in, becoming a higher frequency, 
the harmonics become quieter and quieter until they reach zero decibels. This is also easily shown using a frequency analyzer, like in the parametric EQ2. The top left waveform is just a sine wave, which is one fundamental frequency, or one partial. The bottom left waveform is a saw wave, and you can see if you have a look along the top, there's C3, C4, C5, C6, and so on. These represent the pitch on the keyboard. Now you can see the fundamental is at C3. However, the first harmonic, which is the fundamental frequency times 2, is on C4, which, as I said, doubling the frequency makes the pitch an octave higher. And after that, it's the same thing. Times 4 would be the fourth partial, you see, which is on C5. The top right waveform is a square wave, and you can see the first harmonic on that is the fundamental multiplied by 3. It's halfway between C4 and C5, and if you have a look at the saw wave on bottom left, you can see that the second harmonic in the saw wave is in the same place. The bottom right waveform is a triangle wave. Now this also, like the square wave, is made up of odd harmonics. However, they reduce in volume much faster, meaning that less harmonics are audible, and it makes a much simpler sound. Decibels is the unit of measurement for volume, and is often shortened to dB. The unit is an estimation of how our ears work, as we do not hear sound linearly. dB is also a relative unit, where 0 dB is equal to the quietest sound perceivable by the human ear. Every 6 decibels added is a double in volume. This is useful as a unit of measurement, because otherwise we would be using massive numbers to talk about sound. For instance, a jet engine is one trillion times louder than the quietest sound we can perceive. However, in decibels this just means 120 dB, which is a much more manageable number. So that's about it for sound. I'll include a few links to reading materials if you want to learn more about this. And if you have any questions about this subject, please don't hesitate to leave the question on the Production Bytes Facebook page. Also, if you'd like to see a specific tutorial in the future, head over to the Facebook page and leave a comment suggesting it. So that's about it for this episode. Please like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you next time for Synthesis.